Hello everyone and welcomes, uh, welcome to today's uh, last uh, advanced tutorial sessions. Uh, today we are going to talk about uh, the framed walls. Uh, just as you can see on my screen, I have prepared a small example to talk about the, uh, the details and then uh, I will show you how to build up uh, something. Now today we will focus on the walls, but I will show you also possibilities that you can uh, set up with the with the, with the roof and the uh, slab as well. So now what we see uh, on this screen now is a very simple example with a few uh, basic uh, things that are usually in a, in a structure like this. Like there is the wall, uh, there's a, like a concrete uh, flooring and a, a concrete uh, kind of fun, fundamental um, thing that you can see uh, on, the, on the bottom. Um, sorry for that. I, let me just quickly close this uh, this chat window at the bottom. So what you can see now is is an example to that. Uh, let's see uh, if everything can uh, hear me clearly. Uh, please give me a feedback in the chat if uh, something is wrong. Uh, send me a message. But I think everything should uh, run smooth. So now what you see. Uh, is a very simple wall uh, on top of the fund foundation and there are uh, doors and windows with lintels and all sorts of uh, beams and uh, and uh, wooden structure uh, and also there is a slab above that and there is a, a, a wooden uh, structure for the uh, roof as you can see here so now I will uh, talk about things how you can set up uh, in the software uh, using a, a few examples uh, to this. Uh, let me also load another project which is a larger example to the same thing and uh, that was uh, designed by a, a Norwegian designer um, who created this. This actually is a larger building with the same uh, structural details as you can see and also, uh, well, actually, uh, I will show you how to see the details uh, on, on top of the, uh, the the current layers. Because now what we have here is uh, is on the building. But if I select something like, for example, this wall, you will see uh, the structure uh, nested within. Uh, if I select the other uh, here, you can see. Uh, lines that represent the uh, the framing but actually there is another uh, sort of representation type in the software that you can use when you would like to represent something either with the real um, sort of uh, layers or uh, only with the with the with the structure uh, so let me let me show you how to do that if you uh, have a model like this and you have frame structure in it uh, the th uh, the option that you should go for is in the uh, build 3D model uh, option here at the bottom of the screen. And there you will find something called the wall frame and visible only. So this, is a, this is a kind of a, uh, um, a, a true false um, switch that you can uh, turn on and then when you, when you hit OK then the software will kind of regenerate the, the model but now representing only uh, the wooden structure so it actually does not change the structure it is just simply removing the uh, the, the layers uh, on top of these uh, this, this wooden structure so now you can see that everything here is nice and detailed as much as it was designed also uh, the roof is connecting with the proper structure to the walls uh, well, the, well, the roof is actually represented still with layers and it's because uh, this switch that I show you, it, it's, it, it only has an effect uh, for the wall structure, not the rest of the rest of the building structure. But if I go into the details of this roof, for example, and I show you where you can set those up, uh, you can see that actually for this roof, uh, you have an option to turn on the eaves purling, middle purling, rafter and so on. Well, in this specific case, this was not turned on, but you can also uh, turn those uh, settings on. Just as uh, it was uh, used in the, in the other uh, case, let me show you that. Uh, the first one, in this case, this roof, as you can see, it is a roof I uh, selected. It has all those details, um, nicely detailed, the rafter, the color beams and the ridge board. And in this case, nothing else, but uh, you can add uh, any other 
details like the uh, battens, uh, roof tiles, and, and also uh, other things. Well, we have a, um, um, a detailed um, webinar about how to design a roof and how to uh, turn these things on and off and how to manage those. So I won't go deeper into this uh, setting, but uh, at least you have a, uh, a general concept of how this works uh, in concept, uh, in, in relation to this topic uh, today we are going to talk about the walls. So uh, the, the building that I will use today is actually a building, a sample building that I've got from a manufacturer who designs um, a framed wall structure. They actually create, they actually have a factory and uh, they invited us to see uh, how it was built. And actually these buildings are built in one day uh, with prefabricated uh, walls and, and things like that. But uh, other than that, uh, the software actually is working in the same way. If you have a, a kind of uh, um, a, like a wall that you build uh, on site or, or a wall that is, is kind of uh, created uh, previously in a factory. Now the reason this uh, company uh, designed their panels uh, also in the software is because the software is able to host these things uh, inside the, 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 the regular uh, layer system and they could create their own uh, styles and use them uh, regularly during their design. So when they are with the client, uh, they could use their, their ready-made prefabricated styles that you can do and you can set up for all sort of uh, walls in the, in the software. Even with the framing, I will show you that. So uh, what we see uh, here on the screen, you actually have all those uh, beams inside the layer system. And as you can see, uh, the, there are all those beams and, uh, and columns uh, uh, inside the exterior walls and also in the partition walls. And uh, well, today I will, I will build up a partition wall completely. Uh, so I will show you how you can uh, create the layers and how you can uh, nest the uh, framing inside and how, to, how, how you can position those uh, inside this, uh, this this wall structure but uh, before I do that let me show you something with a wall that has uh, a door and a wall and a, and a window at least so let me go into the details and show you how this looks like now in the software you have uh, two main uh, options when we talk about the structure and the layers of the wall the first one uh, regarding the layers is in the um, added compound walls uh, option if you open that up, you can see uh, this uh, this layer system, and there is uh, in this wall actually there's five layers, uh, and there's one which is the most important layer. This is this is usually the core layer, uh, and this is actually what will host the uh, the framing itself. Uh, you can select any of these layers in the software, and you can tell that this is the displayed layer. And this way you can set up which one will host the, uh, the framing system. So the reason why the framing is in this uh, specific layer, layer with the thickness of more than, uh, more than 15 centimeters is because this is indicated to be the, the display layer. And then uh, the wall framing is designed accordingly. Everything here is set up uh, to, to match, the, match the design of this specific manufacturer's uh, structure. Uh, that was created uh, previously and saved into a style. Now, uh, let me show you how to create something like this. And for the reason, uh, for this topic, I will actually just move on to the side here and I will just create a regular wall and I will show you uh, how you can uh, progressively change uh, one single layer wall into a multi-layer wall and then uh, um, embed those uh, framing details in, into that. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is that uh, I, I draw a wall. This will have, well, well, I will use a very simple one. In this case, I will just use a one with a, with a hundred millimeter layer, uh, layer wide. And I will just uh, draw, I don't know, like a four meter long piece. And then uh, I will just place a door and a window into that. So I will be able to see uh, all the details around the door and around the window and above and be, below the window when I when I design uh, this uh, system. So for that purpose, I will place a door, uh, for example, to here. Well, the opening direction is not, not that much important. And I will place a window somewhere here. Well, I will use a smaller one. I think I will use, 
something like uh, like this for example it's a little bit uh, thinner and I will change its default uh, distance from the wall line and that will be actually in the left hand side I can see that it, it should be zero because now it is hosted in a, in a partition wall well, let me just change the length a little bit more so we can see uh, the regular uh, beams and, and columns later and we have a door and a window and let's just go and set up the details now this wall uh, will be uh, in this specific case will be a partition wall which has the the main uh, layer uh, it will actually have uh, thermal insulation and on the two sides i will just use some sort of uh, plasterboard or something like something like that so I will just go into the details and I start detailing it. So let's just uh, say that I have two more uh, layers. I will insert two more uh, layers into this one. I will set up the most important layer, which will host the framing. So I just select it and I set up the displayed layers. And see that this tiny arrow is actually jumped from uh, layer one to layer two. And I will also set up the materials. Now this material will be the one that will be represented when you create the 3d section and and you see uh those materials on the rendering so uh and there is another setting for the for the hatching so i will show you both the first thing i will use something like uh thermal uh insulation i should look for that in the in the whole library instead of the in model library so i will i think i will go with this one and then i will go with uh, material on the two sides instead of brick i will use uh something like uh, plaster or something like that or bright white whatever it will be uh used uh, uh as a plaster board so i will just use these two and then well i forgot to set up the function the function is important because this is what determines uh the importance of layers when um, um, a multi-layered wall is connected so this uh, function determines that usually core layers are connected to, to core layers and lower priority uh, uh, layers are, are, there, are, are either bumping onto the um, onto the core layer or more more important layers or they just uh, you know they just won't make connections to the other side because there is a more important layer uh, in between them so I will just set this up to a core layer and as this actually is a, uh, a gypsum board or something like that, I will set this up as uh, as a substrate layer. So there is this setting here. There's not nothing much of a change here on the right hand side. There is a tiny interactive uh, preview, but as I did not change the thickness and I did not change the fill pattern yet, everything is as default. So I will just change the, uh, the thickness first. The thickness, uh, on both sides should be around, I think the original design was around 11, uh, 18 millimeters and 18 millimeters. I'm trying to replicate the one that we saw uh, on the drawing. So as you can see now it has changed. And then, uh, well, the base offset determines of uh, where this uh, where these layers are linked to. So usually in case of a, in case of a layer like this, in case of a structure like this, the, uh, the the core layer is connecting to the to the top of the structure, the, which is TS top of structure. Uh, you can actually edit all those constraints, and you can see a, a nice uh, helper dialog here at the right hand side. And many times, not always, but in some sort, in in, in some cases, when the structure is like this, which I design this, uh, the other two layers, the the covering layers. Are actually not uh, going down to the structure but they are actually usually added later on when there is this finish floor so I will just link them to the finish floor uh, this one uh, also and the other one too this will be also linked to the uh, finish floor uh, yeah and also the same goes for the height uh, this I can change as well now I leave them uh, on default but uh, you have similar options and you can use this this uh, helper guide to be able to find a proper uh, connection and then the software uh, will sort out how they are connected together the reason I'm doing this is actually uh, represented in another uh, example let me just load that up uh, this is an example of an American structure and what I'm going to do is uh, is this I, I create those those connections by telling the software uh, that I'm, I'm going to 
uh, rest this uh, framing system on top of the uh, load bearing beams that is the top of the structure and then I will just l uh, land these, uh, these, these other layers uh, in case of this partition wall on top of the finish floor wherever it should be uh, on that specific uh, level it will automatically connect to the proper place uh, this, this, what you can see here are uh, pre-created in the American version of the software and those are also saved in uh, specific uh, um, styles so if you switch to the, uh, to, the, to the American version you will be able to use these uh, as well and as you can see, all the connections, I will talk about these as well, all the connections are automatically sorted out. And should you, uh, if, if you if you actually need uh, an extra um, uh, beam uh, or a column in this uh, specific situation, you will be able to add that later on. But first we will talk about the rules that, that uh, uh, make up a wall like this uh, automatically. And then we will talk about the uh, specialties, the custom cases when you need to uh, perhaps add uh, an individual uh, item on your own. So let me just switch back to the to the first design, and I think uh, I have only one thing to to do, and that is the uh, fill pattern. Now the fill pattern is is the default stone wall fill pattern. So I will edit the first one, and I will just go to the pattern library, which is by the way uh, a flexible library you can extend with your own. Um, library patterns if you want. I, I would just go with a regular dotted uh, whatever the original purpose is uh, a pattern so I can see that it it appears here and I will just do the same thing with the other uh, pattern. This will be the same dotted pattern and inside I, I I'm going to create a, a thermal insulation so I should change this uh, stone wall uh, from uh, this pattern to something like this. This is what we use uh, here in this region. Should you use a different one, you just, uh, you're just you free to pick up anything else. So I will just uh, select that. And now everything is much better. I'm nearly done. Now let's just check whether it looks cool. See, it, this is how it looks like now. I, I'm, I'm happy with this result. Now let me just check a few details here because I just wanted to uh, set up the same uh, structure so yeah I just created those well actually there are different uh, values here but uh, by default uh, in, in general these are these are all set up the uh, same way and well actually here uh, I made a mistake with this design actually I forgot to set up the proper function and if you see that now the uh, the call layer which should be it's supposed to be the the, the call layer is not connecting with it with itself because there is no it is not prioritized so it is not told to the software that it is this is mostly more important than the than the rest but if you just go here and you say that this is a call layer then the software will uh, sort it out so this is why it's important to set up the uh, call layer uh, okay so now this is what we have here but now this time without the uh, without the framing so let me just uh, focus on that and see how that happens. And before I do that, let me just focus on this little tiny detail here so we can see uh, while we uh, further uh, develop this, uh, we will see the details uh, later when I select this. Okay, now when I select it in the 3D, we can't see the uh, framing because there is no uh, framing inside. So if I go back to the details, I need to change the whole framing option uh, here and then I go to the details. Now, by default, the software has uh, a default cross section, a default material, a default setting for everything. Uh, so if I would like to change that, I can, uh, I'm free to do that. I only need to uh, change the, uh, either the cross section of uh, the, um, the, the beams and the, and the uh, structural items inside the software. Uh, the, the default is a simple rectangle, but you can go with anything else. So even you can go with a, a steel profile, an I profile, a C profile, a U profile, uh, whichever you would like to use. Now I'm going to build up a, a wooden framing, uh, but if you would like to design a different one with a different cross section, you are free to go to the profile libraries of the software and just 
trying to find something else like anything from this library or, or from the other libraries. And even you can also design your own uh, cross sections. You can, there's a tool in the software that where you can save a 2D drawing and turn that into a profile and then you will be able to uh, browse that as well. We, we actually focused on that topic on different uh, webinars, so I won't go uh, into details uh, regarding that. And also there is this, uh, this tiny paint bucket, which is for the uh, material settings. So you have the cross section and the material settings, and then well, actually the first page is an inter interesting one. It is it is it is copy properties. Uh, so what will that do? I will actually change a few of those details, and if I would like to uh, copy properties of like materials or cross sections or something like that, this is what I will use. This is this is the uh, copy properties page. It's it's a bit similar to the one that you use generally in the software when you copy properties from one design item that you have on the drawing already to another one. But in this specific case, this tool is built into uh, this dialog because the functionality of this dialog is so uh, so complex that actually this could be a different CAD just for designing the, uh, the, uh, the framing, but luckily it's built into the software. So the first thing that I'm going to create is the, is the floor plate. So, to be able to see that here, uh, I just enable that option and now I can see uh, the floor plate. Now the floor plate has a cut inside and it's because I'm actually changing the properties of an existing uh, wall which already has a door and there's the door, there will be the door uh, when I finish this design. So that's why I actually design, usually when I create the framed, um, framed uh, wall uh, details, I usually create uh, I do it this way, I create a tiny piece uh, and I insert a door and a window so I will see during design, I will see that in, in, the, uh, in, the, in, the, in this little preview as well. So I have a floor plate. Now if I just enable that and then I switch to that page, these are the, all the pages that you can uh, design, uh, then you have the option uh, to change the cross section individually. You don't have to use all the same cross sections everywhere. You can uh, change them uh, according to their purpose. And uh, you can even just change, use an offset. Usually what you can do with the, with the structure is at least you can set up the cross section. You can set up a, a material if that differs from the, uh, from the general settings. You can turn on uh, or off the visibility. And you can also set up an offset. I will talk about that later. Uh, so let's just uh, add the top plate, a wall stud on the left and the right, and this is what we will end up. So now I have uh, a wall with, uh, in this specific case, if I remember well, it has a beach uh, material. I, will, I would like to change that, so I will, I will show you how to use the copy properties. And then I have all these same cross sections, but now in this case, uh, my cross section is a little bit thinner than the, than the structure that I'm going to fill up with. Uh, so I also would like to change the cross section of these items. Uh, so what I will do, I will just go back to the copy properties and I will change the, uh, the generic uh, cross section, which is now uh, 40 by 90 millimeters. Uh, so I go to the uh, modified profile option and I just simply turn this off and I say that the, the, the height of this cross section should be uh, 100 millimeters. Okay, so now I have this preview updated and when I click OK, now I have this updated, but only on this page, nothing happened here because I did not uh, actually pasted these uh, properties to, the, to, to all of the items. And also, I also need to change the material. I would like to use some sort of uh, pine material everywhere. So I just changed this as well. And then now comes the part where I actually copy these settings. So I say that I would like to copy the cross section and I would like to copy the materials to the, the, all of the other items that are uh, available now. So I just copy and paste. And then now if I go here, first things first, I can see that the materials changed to this pine material. Uh, if you were uh, looking at this tiny example, you should you, perhaps you, you saw a little change in the cross section. But if I go to the floor plate, now I can see that now it is 100 millimeter, the top plate is 100 millimeter in the width and the wall stud and the, uh, and on, the on the left and on the right is also uh, changed its cross section. So this is how you can use uh, the copy properties option. And as you can see, 
the floor plate, the top plate is a bit similar, uh, talking about the settings, but the wall stud has a few extra. Like, for example, in case of a wall stud, uh, as you can see it clearly on the, on, the, on the 2D design later on, you can also change its properties and you can change how it looks like uh, on the 2D as well. So if I would like to, for any reason, if I would like to uh, make a change and uh, change its settings, perhaps its line weight should be a little bit uh, thicker than the default or its color should be different. Uh, I can change those settings here as well, just as well with the, with the line type as well. Uh, also an important setting in some regions, uh, those uh, structural items that are intersected uh, are sometimes marked with a cross and that's that's what you can set up uh, that's what you can set up here if you if in your region you don't have this cross you can just disable this but if you have you can just uh, keep it enabled and also you can change whether it has a specific hatch pattern uh, when you see it from the top or not I would just uh, go with the default settings and then the rest is the same the visibility in the 3d and the and the offset as well uh, just as well with the wall stud so now let's see what is an inner stud. Uh, well, actually, uh, all these um, letters here are there for your understanding with this little thumbnail here, which is actually a drawing. So you can actually use the same controls uh, with your mouse. You can just pan that, you can zoom in, zoom out to see uh, it uh, a bit more clearly if that is a little bit small on your screen or something like that. So you can just use it as any other drawings. And now you can see that uh, the floor plate, the top plate, the wall style on the left and the right are all, are all properly uh, marked here. So if I would like to enable the inner start, this is what we should see like in the regular field of this wall. So when I turn this on, they will be uh, represented here and here a little bit. But actually nothing happens around the, the, door and, uh, the doors and the windows, so I should go forward and for example I should turn on the header, this is the header for the uh, doors and the windows. I can also uh, turn on the saddle which, or, or the sill, uh, which is for the, for the windows, it's at the bottom of the window. It's, it's, uh, this is what, uh, when you uh, measure the sill height of the, of the window, this is where uh, that uh, value will be. And this is where it actually is placed. And also you can set up a jack stud. Now the jack stud in, in a few regions, that it is not used everywhere, but in a few regions, they are actually all there for uh, strengthening purposes and also for when, you, when the, when the uh, builders create the, the, the structure, this is uh, where they actually insert the, the, uh, the framing of the window itself. And this is where they drill the, uh, the, the drill, the, uh, the, the structure, the, um, if, especially if it's a wooden structure, uh, this is where they uh, make the connections with with the with the with the building itself. Now, for example, in this case, it is important to uh, set up a king stud. Um, in case of the door, it is also represented. So this is the one that actually holds the the, the doors and the windows. It it creates a, a little bit more uh, more stability in the structure. And also there is a cripple stud which is uh, appearing at the top and the bottom of the of the openings uh, and also there is uh, something called noggin and this is uh, also creating an extra um, an extra structural uh, uh, it has a, an extra structural purpose to make this uh, this whole wall a little bit stronger uh, so if there is some sort of uh, certain power it, it cannot you know distort the wall easily um, in 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 a, in a few countries uh, these uh, settings are not uh, these these items are not represented uh, or they are represented with a different cross section so I will show you now how to use the same settings in case of an, an inner stud header or saddle uh, jack stud king stud cripple stud and the nudging Noggin. So let me just uh, show you what you can do with an inner stud. Now this is a little bit more detailed than the previous ones because it has, it should have uh, actually um, um, uh, something like with, with a with a with a pattern like a, like a spacing pattern. So now what you, what I can see here, I have a few options to set up uh, the the steps uh, like fixed step, uniform step. Uh, fixed up centered or something like that so this is this is all uh, 
or with the uh, alignment of the of the structure itself and then comes the the other important part which is with the spacing so if you would like to change the spacing between uh, the now it's it's also important that you can change the spacing uh, between the uh, like the free space that is that is uh, value D here or you can also change the spacing between the the axes of these um, of these uh, items so it's on you uh, whichever you would like to change you can change and the rest will be recalculated so if I would like to change this to I don't know something like uh, 800 millimeters then when I click on redraw the software created a, a different layout and if I just click on um, 600 and I just update this uh, this preview then I can see it uh, it is changing the, the layout as, uh, just as we could see previously uh, also uh, you have similar options just as in case of the uh, left side wall stud and the right hand side wall stud there is the there is this uh, setting for the line type line weight uh, whether there should be a cross inside the cross section or not it should be visible in the 3d now this this actually this option is actually an interesting one you can disable the visibility for design purposes to see how things are uh, represented but in this case if you do that uh, in the end uh, if you if you just forget forget to turn this back on uh, th these these things will be missing so uh, if you disable this to see the details a little bit better you should turn this back on later on so to be able to uh, create the wall properly uh, also uh, at any time you can disable the, f the, the whole structure just as uh, here uh, as you can see uh, and this is also a good thing because the software uh, allows you a non-destructive non design that means if you just would like to test something out you don't have to erase the things you just turn off the visibility and later on then you, uh, you can turn it back on so all the settings uh, stored with the with the header with the inner stud are, are all, all, all kept you don't need to recreate them all, uh, all the time so now that was the inner stud the header is a little bit simpler uh, and in case of the header in some countries you have uh, multiple uh, headers perhaps uh, and sometimes they are also uh, on the on the thinner side they are actually standing on the thin, thinner side and there is a multiplication of those now in that case you can set that up you can say that you have uh, I don't know three beams and this is what happened so I also need to turn their uh, turn their cross section so I need to go here and I need to rotate this cross section and I, when I say OK and now I have three uh, next to each other uh, so this is what happens in, in, in a few countries you can do that as well also the same goes for the saddle uh, I won't change that now but as you can see it has all the same options you can set up the number of beams uh, you can also change the cross section if you would like to and there is this jack stud which is a bit similar to the wall studs on the left and the right hand side so it have it, it has uh, similar uh, settings regarding the visibility in 2d and in 3d and also uh, the the other things like the um, like the connections and the um, and the offset I will show you uh, an example to the offset uh, a little bit later on okay so the king star is 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 the one that is is resting to at the two sides of this uh, of this um, door and window uh, but generally it has the same settings as the wall stud and the, on the left and the right hand side and the cripple stud is uh, because it has a, a certain uh, pattern uh, it has similar setting to the inner stud and just as well as you can see by default it has a you know a, a little bit more dense uh, um, spacing uh, but you can uh, change it to your taste or to the, the, the local regulations and in many situations it is actually centered so there's uh, one uh, one in the center and then the rest is uh, just spaced uh, from the center so I will just use that setting and there is this uh, this this nogging this is this is uh, an interesting one because it has actually two uh, separate settings for how it is uh, laid out and also you can uh, set up um, a different cross section and you can change the height so uh, in uh, in a few regions they just do this so everything is at the same level uh, and uh, other regions uh, they use it uh, as an alternate uh, not nogging 
Now in this case uh, it is usually because uh, when they place it here um, like let me just show you this example so when they, when they place it here they have space to you know uh, actually place it there using uh, uh, like drill it there using screws or, or, or other equipments to, to, to fix it uh, from 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 this side actually and uh, the other one is from the other side so this is what you can uh, do this is how you can change it and also you can change its elevation and also if you would like to let me just change this uh, this elevation to I don't know like 600 millimeters so this is where it rests now and uh, if you would like to add an extra you can uh, do that by clicking on this one and then you can just change its height to I don't know uh, 1,300 millimeters so and and you can just keep going and adding uh, more and more and more of these so wherever in case of these items you can see an extra uh, tiny uh, green cross at the top that means you can actually add multiple uh, layouts multiple sets uh, to this same wall structure which helps a lot especially when you would like to create uh, i don't know like two uh two columns next to each other in two separate layers i will show you uh, another example to that why that's important and how you can handle that and in a case of uh bracing if you would like to have that as you can see this is the bracing if you would like to have that you can turn that on and you can change the settings for the bracing easily uh, by changing this AB and HD values and HB values. This is what you can do uh, here. You can either decide to set up this value or the other one. And uh, if you don't need that or if you just would like to change its cross section to something smaller in, in, in a few regions, they do that or with a different, completely different cross section or something like that, you can do that or you can just uh, disable that if you don't have uh, with that specific uh, wall framing that you actually design at that, uh, that specific building that you are about to create. Okay, so uh, well now what I created is more or less the, the same that we had in the previous session except the nogging. So I will just remove the uh, this uh, secondary nogging which I created at the lower region. So I just uh, moved there and I erased that. Uh, and now it looks uh, pretty much similar to that one. And then if I would like to save this wall structure with its layers, with its framing, into uh, a style I can do that easily I just click here and I say okay I just would like to create a new one uh, my uh, wall with framing or something like that oh well, actually this is a partition wall and I can uh, save it to the frame construction folder for example or I can create a sub folder even and I can decide where I would like to make this available only in this specific project or in all of the projects on this computer. So I will go with the, the, this, this option and I say, okay and okay. So now, as you can see, all the, these uh, items uh, appeared uh, according to my settings. And if I go to the 3D and I just select it, I can clearly see uh, this in the 3D. And again, if I go to the 3D hammer, build up 3D model, turn on the visibility only of the, of the layers, uh, only, only the framing, I would uh, see that as well. But uh, now there is another topic I would like to show you, and that is uh, with the connections and the extra, uh, um, extra stud that, uh, or, or, or column that perhaps you would like to place into this, uh, this building. I mean into this wall structure. So what happens uh, if I would like to connect uh, walls like this? Let me just create similar uh, to this one. Uh, first here and then another one. For example, um, let me just change the, uh, the layout to the right side and like, like this. Okay, so I will show you a T connection and an L connection, how that works. Uh, now both uh, are available at the top here just as well with the rest of the wall So if you would like to create a T connection between this item and this item the software will automatically solve it and it will automatically uh, Make up the connections between the layers and it will also automatically find the structure and place uh, place an extra uh, Stud at the at the end so you will be able to connect them uh, together uh, also the same thing happens here at the at the end uh, if I use an L connection and I just connect this and this, 
Now, because I use the nail connection, all the walls, uh, all the wall layers are, are nicely bending around the corner and uh, the, uh, the end uh, studs, the wall, um, the left wall stud and right wall stud, uh, should we talk about uh, one or the other, are also line aligned uh, together. So uh, the, this is how actually in this specific case, this wall will look like when they build, uh, build it on the side. On the side. Uh, well, what happens if I would like to, for any reason, for example, if I would like to add an extra here? Now, I could do that with the rules as well. So I could go to the uh, to the wall rules and and change the settings to to match this specific uh, purpose. Uh, but sometimes it is just uh, much simpler to use the the regular column tool. If you just uh, use the column tool, uh, you can go with any sort of uh, cross sections that you that you find here, or you can actually also customize the, the, the column um, cross sections. So what I will do now is just click here with the right mouse button, I click on property, and then uh, I will just uh, find the cross section setting here. Now this is a cross section with a width of uh, 50 and the height of 50 and I believe I used 40 by 100 so I will just uh, do that here as well. So I will just change this to 40 and I will change the height to 100. Oh, that, that's too much. So like that and um, well because now I will place this manually I can you know set up uh, the reference point which I will pick up and uh, by that refer reference point I will just place it on the on the drawing. I will use this one uh, at the left bottom corner because I think now it will be much easier uh, to, to, to handle that. And then now there is another extra setting which I will show you now which is now uh, dis uh, disabled on purpose uh, so that I can show you how that works. So now when I uh, hit OK I can just uh, use the column tool and then just place this right next to this uh, column here as, here as well. So now there is one thing that uh, regarding the 3D and the 2D together is not correct here. And that is uh, actually this column is now not nested into this wall. As you can see when I select this wall, this column is not selected. And also uh, unfortunately the, uh, the thermal insulation and the uh, stud is kind of intersecting each other. They are the the, the stud should not have uh, this uh, thermal insulation here. So that is actually an option that is by default on in the software. So you don't have to turn it on. I just turned it off in this project uh, to be able to represent what that makes. So when I select this um, this stud and I use this option, which is uh, the insert into wall then that will actually solve that. So now when I select the wall, this stud is also selected. Uh, so when I change the wall, if I move the wall, this stud will also move uh, with that as well. So again, this is by default on. You don't have to do what I did now. I just uh, turned it uh, off to be able to represent how that works. So this way you can actually add any sort of extra uh, structural item into the wall and you're free to uh, distribute any individual uh, studs into this uh, uh, this wall structure that you have created previously. Now an interesting thing also with this uh, is that uh, if you have a wall like this uh, you have one extra option which is uh, specified for this specific wall type and that you can find in the local menu uh, which is by the way uh, available here in this floating menu or you can just right click on the wall and that brings up the same uh, menu. So this here is actually the same with the right mouse button. And then here you can see a few options for this wall uh, to edit the wall, edit the layers, uh, change the uh, one side or the other, change the layers, make connections and so on. And now the one that I'm willing to use is the uh, is actually just a moment uh, I'm, uh, I'm willing yeah it's it's here it's in the accessories and that is the place wall framing frontal view this this is a specific one uh, for this one uh, this this frame wall as you can see I should have changed the uh, the, the length of the uh, of the column which I can do uh, later at any time and now I have this structural uh, design. 
uh, which I can use for documentation purposes. I can add dimensions or annotations or, or whatever. So I, now I can create the documentation of this, uh, of this wall structure. Let me just quickly go through whether I, I've uh, forgotten something or not. So we have talked about the 3D representation of the walls. There is this one option uh, that you can use globally in the software to turn off the visibility of the wall framing. Uh, I mean, turn off the visibility of the layers and show only the wall, flat wall framing or uh, use the represent the whole structure as it is. And this, this was this option. Uh, also, I've talked about uh, how you can set up uh, the, the structure, how it, uh, where uh, the, the framing um, goes to goes into, and also you can uh, you could see uh, how to actually uh, connect those items, how to set up the cross sections, the materials, and also the distribution rules. And uh, I also wanted to show you one uh, important thing regarding these settings, and that was the offset. I mentioned it a few times, but I actually did not show you what, what that means. Now, uh, I will create, I will further develop this specific wall here, and I will show you what uh, that means. If I go into the details, uh, let me show you one thing first, so you will uh, understand this much better. If I go into the, uh, to the compound wall settings and I change this uh, display layer option here from the core layer to another one, then this is what will happen. See, the, uh, the framing is automatically jumping to that specific layer, which I told to, which is okay, uh, but it will make sense when I would like to create a layer that has an offset uh, for framing and I would like to completely change it. So now what I just go back and then I change the settings. Now what I would like to do, I would like to split this core layer into two smaller layers by adding a new one and setting the uh, thickness to half the original. Yeah, like this and this. And for example, this one will be a uh, cavity or something like that. Yeah, this will be this one. And I also change this uh, to have uh, no hatch like this. And yeah, well, the rest is fine. Uh, I just wanted to split that layer up. And uh, this is also a core layer, but it is a secondary core layer. And, and uh, when I just uh, do this and I don't do anything else, this is what will happen. See now again, uh, the, uh, the the framing jumped to the to the uh, to the first core layer because that is the indicated layer. Unfortunately, you cannot go here and say that you have two indicated layers. That would make no sense. But what you can do is to solve this in the framing level. The framing can uh, have something what we call an offset. Now, in case of the offset, well, I don't want to uh, offset these things one by one. So I actually would like to copy the offset property to all of the, uh, the, the framing and I will use this option. Uh, but before I do that, let me measure the distance what I, would, I, I have to use. And this distance is, I believe this should be 25 millimeters, but let, let's just make that sure. It is the distance from here to here. Yeah, that is 25 millimeters. So I go back to the settings of this wall and I go to the wall framing and I use the copy properties first page, go back to the bottom, use 25, and I copy this property to all the all these existing structure, uh, redraw, so, and no, I'm sorry, uh, copy, and then uh, it actually is updated. Let's just go and say, okay. So now it is fixed. As you can see now, everything is uh, 25 millimeters shifted to the left because I use that value. Actually, you can also use a negative value if you need to. Uh, if if uh, in, in a case like the, the additional extra layers on the other side or something like that. So you can use a positive or a negative uh, offset value as well. So this is actually what I wanted to show you uh, regarding the, uh, these, these, uh, this framed uh, structure. And uh, at the end, uh, as an extra, I would like to also show you an interesting um, historical uh, example. This uh, is also with a, with a framing, as you can see. Uh, but uh, when we designed this uh, for a museum uh, here uh, in Budapest, we actually did not have the framing system yet. Uh, and we actually used something called railing. Railing is also a cool tool if you would like to have something that is very, very specific and very, very uneven, uh, irregular, 
well in this case even if we would have the uh, framing system uh, this is just so irregular everything is having a certain regular uh, I mean I mean custom distance custom cross-section and so on so we de we decided to, to to use the railing the railing you can actually just uh, put it on a layout and you can just literally design how it looks like and this is what we uh, used here this was a this was a fun project it was it was a very interesting one to design with all this uh, existing uh, visible framing. It's a Roman uh, building, uh, an, an ancient building uh, here, in, uh, here in Budapest. Uh, so I just wanted to show you a historical uh, example uh, where we actually use the wall framing, but with a different tool in the software. Uh, I just wanted to highlight the flexibility of the software uh, that you can, what you can do with, uh, with, with other tools as well. And at the end of today's session, I also would like to, before the questions, uh, I see that uh, you have a few uh, questions coming up. Uh, I also would like to show you another tool, which is the uh, which is the grid design. When you would like to design uh, buildings uh, following a specific grid that you would like to place on the drawing, and then you would like to control what happens uh, by controlling the grid, uh, which is also a very powerful tool in the software. So let me just open up this uh, this example that I had here. Uh, so this is where we ended. Let me just save this and then uh, I will just open up a new empty drawing and I will show you how uh, the, the, the architectural grid works. So let me just open up a new project like that and uh, I still have a few minutes uh, so I will be able to do that. Uh, I just go back to, uh, well, this thing that you can uh, place is in the drafting tools and grid lines. Now the grid lines, just as any other item in the software, has a, a default setting. Now you can either click right click here and you can set up the property or you can go to the drafting properties and there you go, you can find the grid line settings. But both does the same. You can set up in other ones what you would like to uh, design. So I just go here, right click, uh, sorry, uh, grid lines place, right click property. And then I just uh, set up the uh, the structure of it. You can set up the color. You can set up the uh, the lines uh, line type. Uh, whether this is a rectangular or a radial grid, uh, the te the text style where it is represented. Now by default, the software will represent this grid on all the uh, all the layer all the floors. And also, you can set up the prefixes, the signs, and and so on. Now I will just uh, create uh, something with. Uh, with um, for example nine by nine um, uh, horizontally and, and, and vertically and when I hit OK I just uh, place this grid line I mean this uh, grid structure and now what I see here is more than just uh, just uh, just a drawing uh, these are actually uh, grid lines that when you control them, uh, you can change their sign. You can change how the, the 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 software builds up the structure. Now, for that, I actually need to place at least a few columns and beams. So let's just go to the building, and I will just just go with the default column, which is a rectangular, uh, thirty by thirty, and I will just place it falling somewhere here, but using the uh, central point. So I will just hit F five a few times when um, landing at the center I just place it here and then now I when I placed it here the, now the software actually knows that I placed it into a1 so when I for some uh, for any reason for design purposes perhaps I change the grid how it is represented I will do that uh, the software will actually understand that it should also move this structure it, it should not just change the grid but it should also move the structure and the thing for that is actually the software understands that when you place um, an item like this uh, it is placed into the intersection of these uh, these two uh, items so now you have something uh, that is connected to the uh, A and, uh, and, the, and the first uh, grid line. Now let me just show you that we actually have this here so when I move this when I select this and I click here and say I would like to offset it a little bit then as you can see it is jumping on the 2D and in the 3D as well and also if I do something like rotation uh, that will also follow follow the changes let me just uh, go back and just select these here 
And I would like to multiply these. I would like to create uh, nine extra, no, I'm sorry, eight extra copies. So I just do that. Okay, and I pick the center point of this one. And let me just uh, place it here. So even if you copy these, the software will understand that they are uh, resting on top of these grid lines. So when you change the grid lines, it will automatically understand that and it will follow the changes. Let me just remove these two, these as well here. And let me just place a few beams as well. I will just uh, move them from, uh, let me just change the reference point to the center. I'll just again use F5, uh, yeah, like that. And I'll just place one and two, and I can also make copies of these. I should change the uh, length in this case to match the other one. And I should also change their heights, perhaps to, um, well, I believe it's 2,700 or so. Uh, yeah, not, not, that's not the length. Uh, I just changed it back. And I should change the uh, elevation, the base elevation. This should be 2,700. Uh, yeah, now it's much better. And I just would like to uh, copy a few more of those. And again, eight extra uh, from this point, uh, from the center to the end like this yeah and um, now i did that uh so that i can show you what happens if i move this for example if i just move this again i use an offset and I just place it here see now the lengths of the uh of the uh, beams and also the position of the columns are all changed and if i do something like a rotation i just uh, rotate this from this point to this one, for example, then the software will also stretch and change the uh, location of these items. So now with this tool uh, that you can find in drafting tools, grid lines, and you can place the, the, the grid uh, itself, the grid system, and you can add extra grid lines as well. Uh, you can actually create a grid that is interactive with the columns and the beams so when you create something uh, like this concrete uh, building structure or something like that uh, the software will create an intelligent structure that reacts to the uh, to the grid and vice versa okay so uh, this is what i wanted to cover uh, for today's session and let's see if you had a few questions during this uh, session and i will just check the, the the chat what you sent me yeah okay so there is a, a vertical spacing. So there's a question: if the whether the knockings the knockings uh, can not be set to a vertical spacing and link the repeat to the wall height. Uh, well, unfortunately, not. This is not possible. These these are fixed values. Uh, so if I go to the uh, well, let me just load up um, a structure like this, for example here. So if I have a nogging. And if I go to the uh, wall framing uh, and I check this, um, I'm sorry, uh, I don't have login, so this one. Uh, so as you can see, it is a it is a fixed value that you can set up. Now this is in American, uh, this is in in, uh, in feet and inches, so uh, that's why you can see these values here. You can change the uh, the unit system, but uh, as you can see, this is a fixed value. You don't have this edit value like in case of the uh, like in case of the layers uh, of the software, uh, so so this is a fixed value. It it cannot be linked to the to the top of the structure or the bottom of the structure. Uh, also, uh, well, actually, there was uh, there there are, there are other questions, but those are regarding uh, something else. So so this 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 was it. Uh, this was uh, all about the all about the structural uh, systems of the uh, of the wall framing. Uh, and as you, as you can uh, as you could see, you can also store these into into your own styles, and you can use them in uh, in later uh, designs as well. And uh, well, I I did not touch that uh, in my sessions, but actually, if you have these uh, these styles saved on your computer, you can also um, copy those styles between computers. So if you have any of those here. Uh, you can right click on the on the styles and you can just export or import uh, all, all those uh, in uh, into a certain file type that when you move them to another colleague or you just uh, uh, pass them over uh, on a pen drive they can just load it up and they can import into their uh, setting into their uh, libraries of the of that on that uh, certain computer 
So, um, so all those things, the Frida styles are also available. I just wanted to highlight that because I think I did not touch that yet uh, in my previous session. So this is what you can do uh, with the framed uh, walls. Um, I hope you liked it and I hope uh, my examples were uh, clear enough and easy to follow. Uh, there is a package that you can download uh, next to this uh, today's session. Uh, which has this uh, sample project which I was working on. So if you would like to follow what I did uh, by doing uh, the, the, the similar steps, you can just do that or you can just build it up uh, from scratch because this is actually what I did as well. And also if you have a few extra questions later on when uh, this uh, event is already not live, if you uh, watch it later, just uh, send your comment below us in the comment section and we will answer you or just send your email to info at archlinexp.com and we will answer your questions. If you like this content, please give us a, give us a thumbs up. And uh, if you would like to see other uh, sessions like this, when they are uh, aired uh, or if you would like to see our new um, extra features that are coming soon in the f in the future uh, please just uh, subscribe to our channel so you will be um, um, able to see all those um, appearing uh, in time so thank you very much uh, i'm happy that i could show you this uh, these powerful tools and let me know uh, what you think of uh, this this tool in the software either in the comment below or just send us an email uh, thank you very much um, next time uh, we will come with an interesting thing on live uh, so we will uh, wait for you at the uh, following webinar session thank you very much goodbye have a nice day